Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Magic 3D Printing. Uh, today we're going to do a, a, a something different. We're not going to do a filament review. We're going to be talking about CR10 upgrades. Now, do you guys remember when you first got your CR10? For some of you, it might have been quite a while ago. For others, you either, either just got your CR10 or maybe you're still waiting for it. So when I got mine, I was really excited. I unboxed it, got it assembled, still had that warped glass, but uh, uh, you know, I did the typical things. I printed a Benchy, I printed the little Decapa Cat, although some of you I think now get the, uh, the Devil Baby. But uh, it was a big printer, so I was trying to figure out what do I do? Well, you know what I did? I printed a great big rocket. Now this baby is 400 millimeters tall just to the top of the main body plus the, the height of the, uh, the nose cone. So I got this printed and I thought it was fantastic. Um, but then you know what? Then I heard about putting on a new mirror, tightening the belts, tightening the screws, uh, making sure the gantry was square, um, adjusting the X carriage and making sure that was level. In fact, uh, I wasn't really happy with the way that the rollers were under the bed. So I, then I heard that a lot of the guys removed the center set of rollers under the bed and I did the same thing. So once I did all that, how do you test it? You got it. I printed another great big rocket. So once I did that, um, I heard about adding a second lead screw. And of course, there's a couple of types of those that, that uh, we've all read about. On Thingiverse, you're going to find the mechanical lead screw that uses a belt to tie it to the primary one uh, to keep them in sync. And it's a little less expensive. And then you've got what I call the classic uh, upgrade, where you basically add a secondary uh, motor, second lead screw. Um, some of the guys have talked a little bit about the, having issues with those staying in sync, but so far mine's been perfect. So I did all that. And what do you do? You got it again. I printed another great big rocket. So after that, then, of course, I heard about uh, the gantry, you know, get, making sure the gantry was stabilized. And, of course, then on Thingiverse, again, there's some of the uh, gantries that are done with the, uh, the big lead screws and printing the additional plastic parts to hold them in place. Um, I chose to go with one of the wire uh, stabilizers. Uh, I went out to 3D print to form and uh, bought a kit and installed that. And of course, once that was done, gotta print another great big rocket. So, when you do all those things, does it really make any difference? I mean, does it really improve the quality of your prints? Stick around and find out. Oh, ho, ho, it's my So let me tell you a little bit about the, uh, the model that I chose to do this. Uh, this was something I got off of Thingiverse and um, it had a lot of very peculiar settings or extensive settings maybe I want to say. Uh, so I, I followed their uh, suggestions to the T. So everything about this is, um, is done according to their specifications. The um, one thing I did have to change in this rocket though is um, to make it 400 millimeters tall, uh, it was not going to fit on the bed because normally this, this uh, model is a lot more bulbous. So I uh, changed the height on this, the Z, uh, but I did it with the, um, the aspect ratio uh, unchecked, which introduced some, a few uh, oddities in, in the print. So in any case, this was the first one I did when I first put the, uh, the, the rocket together. Um, I thought it was a great print at the time, but to be honest with you, it's not very good at all. Uh, this print has a lot of uh, blobs and zits. Uh, you can feel the layering is extremely uneven. Um, so yeah, it, uh, it wasn't bad. I thought it was great at the time, but like I said, uh, there's a lot of uh, problems with this particular print. So after that, I tightened everything up. I got the, um, the belts tightened. The screws tightened. Um, 
and it made a huge difference. This is probably the, the change that I made that has the, mo the most effect on the overall print. Uh, and this one, the, all of the zits are gone. The layer lines are much, much more smooth. Um, the little, little points on the bottom of the uh, thrusters at the bottom here before were basically flattened and blobby, and now they they're, have nice points on them. Uh, so this actually made a big, big change. You can see my little, my little notes here that I made about the, uh, the observations that I made. But this really came out pretty good. Uh, again, you can still feel a few of the, uh, the layer lines, uh, maybe a little over extrusion, but uh, generally speaking, this was a big, big improvement. So after that, we, uh, we went on to, uh, to this particular model, and this was adding the additional uh, Z. I know there's been a lot of debate out there whether or not the additional Z lead screw really makes any difference or not. General appearance, I would say no. Uh, everything is still crisp and clean. Um, I did get a, a few little spots here where you can still feel the, um, the overall layer lines. So this isn't completely smooth. Um, I think in general, over a period of time, the additional uh, lead screw will um, will add some stabilization over a long period of time as you use the, the printer more and more. Uh, but this did not have a, a huge, huge uh, change in the, uh, in the print. The last, um, the last one, which was adding the gantry stabilization uh, through adding the, uh, the guy wire system, um, I was actually surprised uh, with, a, with the entire uh, piece uh, stabilized um, although you, I'm sure you probably can't see it in the video, uh, this is way smoother. And I know some of the guys who have shot videos talking about adding the lead screw and some of those things typically just print a benchy. And obviously when you've got a 400 millimeter tall uh, printer, uh, you know, printing something that's two or three inches tall doesn't tell you a lot. But overall, this piece came out really nice. Like I said, the, the layer lines now are all smooth. Everything is clean and sharp. So all of this, again, was done based on the settings that were um, given with the video, with the piece uh, from Thingiverse. And uh, the last thing I wanted to do was uh, take a look and see what this would look like with my typical uh, printer settings. So uh, I was tired of printing white rockets. And so what I did this time was I printed a great big pink rocket. So this, this particular rocket, like I said, is not done with the settings that uh, were recommended. This uh, is using Simplify 3D with my typical profile. And I got to tell you, this piece is absolutely gorgeous. Everything is crisp and clean. Uh, the layer lines are just smooth. Um, in fact, I don't know if I would even do anything with this to quote unquote finish it because the, the print is just beautiful. Very little ringing. Um, very, very happy with this piece. So as a recap, um, I would say that generally speaking, the, the most improvement that I saw was through uh, adjusting the printer. Um, but then as we go on and make the additional improvements, I would say that uh, the additional lead uh, in com combination with the uh, gantry stabilization really makes a big difference because the final product was absolutely outstanding. So that's a wrap up for this, uh, this video. Uh, if you enjoyed it, uh, give us a thumbs up. If you uh, want to, subscribe. And uh, make sure that you, um, you know, hit that bell so that you know when the future episodes are coming. Thanks, guys. See you next time. Oh, oh, oh.